simplicity. Nonviolence, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault finding, compassion, and freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty, and steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, freedom from envy, and the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities belong to godly persons endowed with the divine nature. Humility, pridelessness, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master teacher, cleanliness, steadiness, and self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification, absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age, and disease, non-attachment to spouse, children, home, and the rest, and even-mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant and unalloyed devotion to me, Krishna, resorting to solitary places, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization, and philosophical search for the absolute truth. All these I thus declare to be knowledge, and what is contrary to these is ignorance. So, these many uh, qualities are uh, cultivated by initiates. And uh, because Krishna has recommended this in Bhagavad Gita, uh, these qualities are required to become an initiate. So, while there is a formal initiation ceremony where one receives a spiritual name and takes certain vows, the actual initiation is when one has developed these qualities given by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita as uh, wisdom. So, all these qualities together are wisdom according to the esoteric teaching. And notice that the first one is truthfulness. So, a person who is cultivating wisdom, first of all, has to be dedicated to truth. Without truth, there can be no trust, and without trust, there can be no love. So, truthfulness is the most important qualification of a person who is searching for the absolute truth. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because if a person is addicted to lying and misrepresentation, then how can they ever find the absolute truth? You'll notice the next quality is fearlessness. Fearlessness comes from knowing that one is an eternal spirit soul. In other words, nothing that happens in this life can really hurt me. I am immortal, eternal, indestructible, pure consciousness. Therefore, uh, the things that happen in ordinary life, the ups and downs of life, uh, these are only temporary conditions, and they don't really affect me. What affects me is my destination in the next life. Therefore, the next item, purification of one's existence and cultivation of spiritual knowledge. These two are the most important aspects of an initiate. His dedication is to purify his existence and to cultivate spiritual knowledge by studying the scriptures and also by performing sadhana, yogic sadhana, or the process of self-realization. Uh, this gives purification of one's existence by letting go of material consciousness and rediscovering one's original spiritual consciousness. So then we see the next one is charity. What well, does that mean, um, you know, giving to the Salvation Army at Christmas? Uh, no, it means that one dedicates one's life to the service of the spiritual master teacher 
and the senior uh, members of the esoteric teaching. Self-control is the next one. Self-control means that we follow the rules and regulations which are given by the master teacher. No intoxication, no meat-eating, uh, no illicit sex, and no gambling. Uh, performance of sacrifice. Performance of sacrifice means, first of all, chanting the holy name of the Lord. We have given one mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. There are so many nice mantras in the scripture. And if one performs this sacrifice of Nam Sankirtan, or chanting the holy name of the Lord, he very quickly attains the qualifications required for all of these uh, qualities mentioned in the esoteric teaching. The next one is study of the scriptures. So we've been studying the scriptures a little bit, but to really study the scriptures means to study them scrutinizingly, as my spiritual master has said. Well, what does this mean? It means you study with a copy of Bhagavad Gita in one hand and a dictionary in the other hand. And if necessary, you look up each word and identify the specific definition used in the scriptures so that you can duplicate the meaning uh, that's originally intended by the author. So in this case, the author, the original author, is uh, Srila Vyasadeva, and he's considered an incarnation of Narayan. So, because he's a divine incarnation, everything he says is perfect. And similarly, the commentary by the master teacher is also considered to be perfect. The commentary is necessary to bring the understanding of the scriptures into the contemporary situation and show us how to interpret them properly, according to the time and the circumstance. So, by studying the scriptures scrutinizingly, we come to attain transcendental knowledge. And this is very important. The next items are austerity and simplicity. That means a student of the esoteric teaching does not live like an ordinary sense enjoyer. He deliberately restricts his enjoyment of the senses and invests his energy in transcendental pastimes. This means beginning with chanting, studying the scriptures, uh, doing so much service, to help the spiritual master. Um, and simplicity. Simplicity means we don't make elaborate arrangements for our own well-being. We accept the blessings of the spiritual master and we do whatever is needed to help the spiritual master. Uh, this is simplicity. This is being a student. One who attains this vow of simplicity may find that he has no taste for material aggrandizement, material enjoyment, material importance, power, wealth, fame, and so on, uh, but simply wants to remain a student of the spiritual master for his entire life. Well, this is very good. Uh, it's a great blessing. If one can attain this, then his path to spiritual perfection is guaranteed. So initiation means the beginning of something, and in this case, our initiation in the esoteric teaching is the beginning of seriously cultivating all these qualities of spiritual consciousness so that we can recover our original identity and reclaim our perfect body. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of transcendental music and mantras. <laughs>